Welcome back to the COS Business Podcast. I've actually rebranded it uh, to just COS. I think that just works better. Uh, Letting you guys know that. (laughs) Welcome back to the COS Business Podcast. My name is Andrew Hasley, and I am the host of the show. Today we have on Brandy and Leo Nunez. Uh, Can you guys tell us what you guys do? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Leo and I own a boutique insurance agency here in Colorado Springs, specializing in alternative healthcare options. Um, major medical is not necessarily fit for everyone and there are a lot of new alternative things on the market so we offer really innovative solutions for business family and life okay sweet (laughs) well I can't wait to get into that in this episode but first I'm going to read the advertisements and if I was British I'd say advertisements right (laughs) (laughs) I I don't know why I say I I don't know why I'm so weird sometimes (laughs) hey dude I like to keep it it, keep it real though (laughs) So yeah, the first uh, uh, sponsor, or first sponsor of the show is uh, actually my company, Vehement Visuals. Uh, we produce videos for businesses, and we focus on uh, creating uh, innovative uh, new ways to do that too, as well, and different strategies. Our goal is to uh, uh, get results and to make sure uh, that the videos we're doing for your company really help uh, accelerate and grow your company. We don't just want to make a pretty video. That's not that's not our goal. Uh, we do know some people who do just make pretty videos, but. <laughs> But our goal is to really uh, dive in and really figure out what's working in your business and really help accelerate that with the power of video and also build deeper connections with you. Everyone knows how powerful video is uh, for the most part, uh, but it's just being able to take action on it. And uh, yeah, that's what we help businesses do. And yeah, (laughs) so that's Vehement Visuals. That's the first sponsor of the show. Second sponsor is actually uh, the COS Business Podcast. Uh, We have advertising space just like the one you heard and just like this one you're hearing now. If you'd like us to read a 15 second to a minute long advertisement (laughs) uh, (laughs) at the beginning of every episode, we can make that happen. Uh, Reach out to cosbusinesspodcast at gmail.com and we can uh, talk, talk about that. Uh, what's cool about the way we do ads is I read them in front of the guest. So the guests have an opportunity to even provide feedback and bounce back on each ad uh, if they want. Yesterday we discovered that was a unique quirk of uh, of the ads uh, for this show. No one's really doing it like that. <laughs> so that's why I say 15 seconds to a minute. Uh, uh, the standard is, you know, people will charge 15 seconds and then you charge double for 30 seconds. But it's one flat rate for fi- for the whole thing because it can – I often riff – uh, on on like you can ha- you can tell me to just read the, the exact sentences you want me to read or you can give me freedom to riff on it as well uh, so it's it's up cool. to you <laughs> so yeah that's uh the the advertisements uh <laughs> I'm gonna keep saying it like that um, I would like to promote the patreon page we have for the co- for the podcast where there's gonna be bonus content coming on there I was thinking about uh, getting wine bottles and slapping the Colorado Springs business podcast logo on it and uh, adding that as like a monthly uh a reoccurring gift you get by being a Patreon member because uh, there's different packages. I'm trying to think of unique, cool ways uh, to really do it, uh, throwing stickers in there. Uh, I'm I'm going to be doing at least uh, some bonus content too as well, at least one episode extra a month that's just going to be me really recapping all that guest. Uh, that, and that's the Patreon. You can find that at patreon.com slash COS business. And uh, those are all the advertisements for today. And uh, I'm going to roll the intro music and we'll get in to the interview. (laughs) This is a show where we have real conversations with entrepreneurs and business owners who are mostly in Colorado Springs doing things in the community of Colorado Springs. All right. (laughs) Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how's it going guys? Great. (laughs) You guys are the first double guest. I don't know who to talk to. It's, it's, it's unique. I'm going to let him do all the talking. Okay. Okay. (laughs) So Leah, Leah's going to be doing the talking. (laughs) No, she's the bigger talker. (laughs) Yeah. Maybe that's why she's giving you a platform now. (laughs) I'll just just tap her on the leg. It's like, you take this one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Terrible. Okay. I try not to talk over him, but I do. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It happens. Uh, uh, yeah. (laughs) So business. Yeah. Is that mic good? Are you sounding good inside your mic? I can hear myself. Okay, but we can't there hear you. Go. Oh, we can't hear her because she's connected separately. Oh, okay. Uh, or, or, I, that's why you're hearing like, uh, uh, why is she so quiet? Yeah. Uh, I. It's all new today, guys. Yes. Because you <laughs> I'm know, not used to her it's being the first this quiet. Yeah. <laughs> We're just winging it. Yes. <laughs> well, last night, uh, well, I was supposed to get another mic stand. I have a third mic and one that looks just like this—a condenser mic. It's over there in that bag, but I don't have a stand or a cord for it. That's and okay. I'm a big fan of just making stuff happen. Yeah, making it happen, improvising. And, Absolutely. And you know, well, what happened was by the time I remembered, 
Guitar Center was closed last night, and they don't open until 10, and that's when we record this episode. So <laughs> Totally fine. So I was like, I'm going to make it happen regardless, uh, but we're going to make sure that Brandy's voice or whoever was sitting in that chair's voice uh, comes through. Comes through. Sounds good. Uh, the audience will hear it, uh, but we won't. Gotcha. <laughs> we won't hear you as clear. Gotcha. Uh, we can still hear you, though, because we're here. Yeah. And that's enough technical talk. Let's talk about your business. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, sure. So uh, what, how would you guys get started in this uh, this insurance realm? Uh, and what makes you guys, like, like, specifically different? Like, how are you guys not just working for another insurance company? What makes you guys real, like, uh, entrepreneurs and business owners? Yeah, well, I mean, it starts friendly from the beginning. I'll let Leo tell that story on how we actually got into the business itself. But we are very unique because we don't offer um, the typical things mm -hmm. that most people in the medical realm offer. So anyway, I'll let Leo tell you the story of how we got into it because I don't think either one of us ever thought we would land in insurance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. It was not on the aptitude test in high school. Like, yeah, you know what? Later down the road, I think I'm going to insurance. It, yeah. was, <laughs> it was never on the radar. Um, and most, and like, like most people out there, you know, um, insurance. Oh, they're tapping me for something. No, go ahead. Okay. No. So like, like most people out there, um, insurance is like the least thing that they want to talk about. It's not exciting. It's not fun. Um, in most people's eyes, they see insurance as it's an expense. Um, mm -hmm. but at the same time though, for, you know, it's something that's necessary. So people have homeowners insurance. We have car insurance. People, we insure our cell phones, we insure our pets. Mm -hmm. Um, and so there is a need for it. It's just not the most comfortable thing that people want to spend money on because they don't see actually something tangible at the beginning. For and sure. so for us, it wasn't anything that we want to dive into. We had the same opinion of insurance as everybody else. Um, but, uh, the way, the way we came into insurance is we moved here to Colorado Springs. I was looking for a different opportunity. I have a lot of history. Uh, most of my working history has been in the restaurant industry and service already mm -hmm. and working with people. Um, but I want to do something different, have a little bit more control over my life and not work the crazy hours of being in the restaurant business, which I did for over two decades mm -hmm. and was looking at different opportunities and, um, actually, uh, I don't know if we can name specific no, companies. Name it's a, specific. Um, so um, Aflac here locally was um, was looking for um, people to hire. They saw my they saw my uh, resume online. Said, "Hey, come on in for an interview." I was like, "Well, what you know? What do I got to lose? Mm -hmm. Could be you know here might you know it might be an interesting opportunity." And I didn't really I was like most people that have seen the Aflac commercials on TV. So I know there's a funny duck that yeah. sounds you know that's kind of a lot kind of stuff, but really didn't understand what they did and what actually their um, their specific how they were different than every uh, than most uh, insurance carriers that people are familiar with. And so after sitting down with them and actually getting to kind of like the full pic, the behind the scenes picture of exactly what Affleck is, how it works and what it does, it had that aha moment goes, it resonated. It's like, I can, t I can get behind this because I personally needed this when I have, a, you know, a, a unique situation where I landed in the hospital, I had major medical and I was like most people that said, Hey, you know, sign up for my major medical plan. I'm good. I'm covered. I should be, you know, taken care of ended up having to use my major medical plan and ended up having $10,000 in out-of-pocket expenses that was not covered by my medical insurance. And that happens to a lot of people. It's called that thing called the deductible, the co-insurance, the prescription costs, the co-pays, out-of-network fees, all that stuff tacked up to a $10,000 debt. Wow. I don't know about you, I know, but I know about me. I don't have, I did not have ten thousand dollars just sitting in a bank account waiting to be spent on in, on medical medical expenses. Mm -hmm. And so once I realized what Aflac does is help actually put money, cash money, in people's pockets whenever they do incur medical expenses for illness and injury. I was like, this is what I could have used a few you know years ago when I was stuck in the hospital and not be carrying the debt that I am carrying now because of that hospital stay. Mm -hmm. Even though I felt like I was taken care of because I thought a major medical plan was the end all be all and we've been paying for it for two decades. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so that resonated with me going, man, more people need to find out what Aflac does because this is very useful to people because it takes care of their financial situation and protects that when you have a medical situation occur. And so for me, it was very easy to get behind that and try and share that education. And like I said, I was ignorant, like most people that knew the commercials, but didn't know really what they did. And so I had mm -hmm. to get that message out there and start educating people. And if people, you know, people saw value in it. Great. If not, Hey, at least I shared you what they do and you know, it's out there and it's available to you if you want it. Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of how we stepped into the insurance industry, um, is, is through that, you know, me joining with Aflac, um, Brandy eventually decided to take the yeah. leap too and joined on <laughs> <Yes>. board. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, and since that time, and this was, um, almost three years ago, okay. um, as we started going through our Aflac career and building our Aflac business, 
we started realizing there's a lot of other things that people were asking for. And they're going, hey, can you do that? You know, does, we, we like Aflac. We see the value in it. We want to go ahead and do that. But does it take care of this or does it take care of that? And we started realizing, hey, there's, there's more things that, that people are asking for. There's what can demand. we, there's a demand. So mm-hmm. what other things can, who else can we bring into the fold? Who else can we partner with or become affiliates with to be able to take care of, you know, the small stuff to the big stuff. Yeah. What people are asking for, you know, Hey, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this. So we started kind of branching out and becoming more of a boutique kind of agency, being able to look for alternative solutions for, you know, a very common problem, which is trying to find, you know, quality healthcare. That's not going to break the bank. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's the, it's funny. Cause I was always, you know, like most people, whenever open enrollment came, it's like, you know, Hey, uh, guess what guys, nothing's changing, but rates are going up. So you'd sign away a few hundred dollars more a month because insurance never goes down every year. It always goes up every year. And um, it's, you know, hey, does anybody want to talk to this, you know, AFLAC representative after you've signed up for a few extra hundred dollars a month? No, I don't. I don't want to spend more money on insurance. I'm good, right? Mm-hmm. And then we firstly had to use it and we realized, hey, there's a lot of holes to fill. You know, it doesn't help me pay my rent or my mortgage or feed my family and things like that. And that's the problem is that you can have the best insurance in the world, but if you can't pay your mortgage, your doctors aren't getting paid either. Mm-hmm. And you got to keep a roof over your head. So we started with uh, supplemental insurance and AFLAC as our first carrier, but we realized that there's a lot of small business owners looking for needs, right? And the problem is, is that I don't need to compete with the state, you know, the state exchange. There's no reason for me to have, you know, to do major medical, but there's a lot of alternative things on the market. And so whenever we started looking to expand our business and found out there's other alternatives that, you know, as far as healthcare, you know, things like uh, direct primary care, medical cost sharing programs, things like that, you can literally bundle pieces together and get amazing, you know, coverage and have protection in place without it costing what major medical does. Mm -hmm. The only thing is you have to have two different services. You know, I've got one for my everyday non-life-threatening cold flu sniffles preventative and something else for my major catastrophic stuff. What happens if I'm in a major car accident or you know, there's maternity or a cancer diagnosis and things like that. But by separating your services, you don't have this cookie cutter package that you pay a lot of money for mm-hmm. and only use once a year for that flu shot or that sinus infection or whatever. You know? So we, um, we launched our agency officially back in November, I guess, of 2019 um, after being a single carrier rep for a long time to be a more holistic solution for business owners because they can piecemeal everything we do together or they can offer the whole package. Mm-hmm. But they get to choose what works for them and their people versus them just getting this thing of, here you go, I hope you can use this. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's one of the things that makes us different is the options that we offer are non-traditional. They're not your tr- you know, typical major medical plan. You get to customize the package fully comp- you know, based off of what you need. Mm-hmm. And the cost is a lot less, which is okay. nice. So you guys, uh, who's your main uh, ideal clients? Really, it's people that are tired of working in a broken system. I think a lot of people (laughs) are disgruntled about major medical and the way it's gone and premiums going up every year and they don't even use it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no need to penalize yourself with a major medical plan if you have no pre-existing conditions and you're a fairly healthy individual. There's other things that you can do to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. And so if you're tired of looking for options that don't really seem like they fit your budget, and don't really seem like they fit your needs, mm-hmm. there's always, it's always worth that conversation mm-hmm. of what else is on there on the market and what else make, might make sense, you know? Mm-hmm. So um, it is really nice to be able to have that availability, but you'll never hear it advertised. You know, it's one of those things that, I mean, why would, it takes away from the major medical sales and that's where mm-hmm. all the money is, right? So why would okay. they want to promote alternative healthcare options? You know, What's so you got to know the right people to talk to. What's some of the alternative uh, me- medical health, health benefits you guys offer. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Well, the the best ones. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, again, it's, you know, packaging things like, you know, direct primary care, which if you don't know what that is, concierge medicine is amazing. Um, And then having things, you know, that can help supplement some of the bigger out of, you know, out of pockets for either, you know, big traumas, big broken bones, that Mm -hmm. kind of stuff, you know, but there's, there's a lot of things that you can do. I tell people all the time, don't assume that because major medical is unaffordable, there are nothing, no other options. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of things we can do to help protect people. And major medical, what do you mean by that? Just your traditional, your Anthem, Blue Cross, your Kaisers, okay. all of that kind of stuff, okay. you know. And a lot of people get uh, their insurance provided through their business mm-hmm. or through their uh, job, I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so do you guys, you guys work with a lot of businesses? We do. We mm-hmm. work with small business owners. That's primarily our bread and butter mm-hmm. because uh, unfortunately they're an underserved market. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're a small business with, you know, five to 10 employees or even 25 employees, you know, anything under 50, 
that is not full time, you're not required to offer benefits, but a lot mm -hmm. of owners want to. The problem is, is because they're a smaller business, they don't have the buying power to compete with the big guys. Mm -hmm. So they go out there and try to find a plan, but because they're only a five man you know, company or a 10 man company, the prices are just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So we work with a lot of small business owners because they are, you know, they want to take care of their people. Yes. But we also work with individuals. So that's the nice part about it is there's not necessarily anyone that's restricted. Mm -hmm. We just obviously need to make sure that we're the right fit for them. For sure. So you've broken a bone. You don't have metal ins med um, insurance. Mm -hmm. Is it too late? <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, it, with any insurance, it's, yeah. you know, you need it before you have to use it. For you know, sure. um, <laughs> it's just like car insurance. I can't, you know, you know, wreck my car and then it's go get car insurance right? and then, you know, claim on it. So absolutely. I mean, prevention's key. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to have something in place before it gets to that point. Yeah, Unfortunately, yeah. most of us are reactionary, not proactive. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't always have things in place that we need. Mm -hmm. So if you <clears throat> do uh, take care, of, if you do do some preventative stuff, does that help your, your rates go down? No, not necessarily, because okay. we've already separated the two things. Mm -hmm. So things like direct primary care, which that's what they specialize in there. I mean, it's a flat rate cost, so it doesn't fluctuate, which okay. is really, really nice. Um, and then on the, obviously the medical cost sharing side, that can always fluctuate off of major claims, mm -hmm. but whenever you're working in a big pool of people that are contributing to it, not necessarily, mm -hmm. you know, you can lock those in for an extended amount of time, you okay. know, but yeah, prevention's always nice because then you don't have to have the big stuff happen. Yeah. yeah. So yes, <laughs> technically you could bring costs down over time by, you know, being able to address needs and concerns before they become mm -hmm. a problem. For sure. Yeah, a big a big thing that happens that currently with the way the major medical system works or just ma major medical insurance is that you, even for your basic doctor's visits, there's usually typically going to be a copay. So whenever people go like, well, not I'm feeling a little bit under the weather. Should I go actually see the doctor or not? Well, it's going to cost you money. So they make that choice of like, do I spend the dollar, the, the money for that copay visit? Or do I just sit at home and just maybe hopefully it'll just pass. Mm -hmm. um, and then sometimes even that happens even just not with illnesses, but with injuries. Like, hey, you know, I kind of kind of tweaked something. It doesn't feel right. But, you know, if I go to the doctor, it's going to cost me X, Y, Z much about a mo um, amount of money because they're going to, you know, first my copay for the doctor's visit. If they need to run an MRI or labs, I'm going to pay money out of pocket from that because only once you hit your deductible, then things start to get covered. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes those deductibles are literally into thousands of dollars. So until you spend so many thousands out of pocket, then that's when the insurance really kicks in and starts taking care of the rest. So people will, will basically avoid going to the doctor because they see it as a doctor visit, even with major medical is an expense. Mm -hmm. And so they avoid that. But then when you can, when you can provide things like direct primary care, where that doctor's visit is already included in the price of your membership, nice. you're not going to avoid going to the doctor for something minor, which then may, that minor symptom mm -hmm. might actually be the sign, the first signs of something more major. So maybe if you did go get that sprain checked, you would have found out it's actually not a sprain, but actually a crack, a fracture. And mm -hmm. therefore, hey, you know what? Let's put a boot on your foot so that way that cr that crack or fracture does not get bigger and bigger. And, 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 and then instead of continuing to walk on it, just say, hey, I'm just going to walk it off because I don't want to go to the doctor. And the next you know, that thing fully splits and cracks. And next you know, you're having rods and pins put in. And yeah. that's a whole different ball game. And you could have completely avoided it by just having that initial visit to go to the doctor and just get it looked at for the first time. If you know there's not anything that's going to you know break the bank by just having that checkup. Mm -hmm. So being able to provide a, a way for people to have access to a doctor and mm -hmm. it not be a financial decision that prevents them from, should I get this checked or should I not, could lead to better health down the road. And sure. better health down the road leads to less expensive health care. Mm -hmm. Do you guys typically see a general age range you guys work with? Uh, I mean, honestly, it's all over the board. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the people that we work with, um, I would say, are probably... 30 to 50 years old, mm -hmm. uh, some in their 20s, obviously. So 20 to 50 years old, probably. And a lot of people that, you know, they don't have major underlying conditions. Some mm -hmm. do. Um, direct primary care is great for things like high blood pressure, or high blood pressure, high cholesterol, uh, asthma, chronic conditions, things like that, because they'll help treat, you know, along the way. Um, but again, they're not an end-all be-all. So you definitely need a backup plan for that. But we work with people all over the board. And if we're not a good fit for what their condition is or their situation is, then mm -hmm. we refer them to one of our affiliates that we know would be a better solution for them. You know, we, we partner with people all over the city to make sure that we're a resource and we can't just turn someone away because they don't necessarily fit the mold of what our I ideal client is. For sure, for sure. You know? I was just thinking that because, you know, I was thinking I haven't been to the doctors forever. <laughs> yeah. Like 2015, maybe. <laughs> There's a lot of options on the market and it's just a matter of knowing what is available, you know, mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, and I was thinking, you know, like, the older you get, the more you probably need to to go to the doctors. Oh, yeah. 
or well, I mean, come on. We're all in our young, you know, in our 20s and in our youth, young and invincible, right? Nothing's That's ever going to happen, yeah. <laughs> you know, but we live in Colorado. We're a super active state. There's mm -hmm. people that, you know, we hike, we bike, we, you know, ride, you know, ATVs and, you know, kayak and all kinds of stuff, mm -hmm. you know, but just because we're a super active state doesn't mean small things just don't happen. Do when there's that. snow on the ground before the end of the month, it will happen, <laughs> right? <Yes. laughs> when there's snow on the ground and you have that slip and fall in the parking lot or at home going up and down your stairs or whatever it is, you've got something in place that would at least protect you and it doesn't have to cost you $500 a month. For sure. Yeah. 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 I, I had to go to the, actually, I just, I, I take that back. I went to the doctor's last October mm -hmm. and it was expensive. Yeah, it <laughs> is all the time. And that's it's, why nobody goes. It was just an ER too. Yeah. And what, what, what sucks about it so much is I should have just waited because <laughs> yeah. it was just like, it was a really bad stomach pain. I was like nonstop puking. Like I, I found out that I could just you know tough it out at home <laughs> instead of having to pay. Uh, but a, imagine a if you had something <laughs> in the uh, in you know in place where you could have just seen a regular physician. Yeah, yeah and yeah. never have had a land in the ER. Exactly. You know, and yeah, that's yeah. the problem is we use major medical for you know really ninety percent of what we're going to get treated for, which is our random stomach pains, our migraine mm -hmm. headaches. Well, my face was getting numb too. I was like, okay. okay. Well, that's a whole other so symptom. I probably would have gone to the ER too. <laughs> I was you know? freaking out. But yeah, it's one of those things that you know we get this cookie cutter package and we use it because we go to the doctor like once a year, mm -hmm. you know, and it just doesn't make any sense. So I always, you know, it's funny because I started using this analogy a, a couple months back and it seems to make sense for a lot of people. It's like cutting the cord to cable, mm -hmm. right? It's like, you know, I, I had an employee, a room of employees I was talking to and I asked them, I said, you know, why do you not have cable anymore? And it's like, hey, it's too expensive. I didn't watch half the exactly. stuff. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, okay, so what do you have now? Disney well, now Plus. I have Disney Plus and Hulu <laughs> and Prime and Netflix. And then it adds up to, it can't It, it can't, can't add, add up. up. And then I was like, so do you have more for less? And they're like, mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm like, we do the exact same thing with your employee mm -hmm. benefits. You know, we break the small stuff to, from the big stuff apart from each other. I just need okay. Netflix and that's all, Brandy. Yeah. So you, it's like, <laughs> hey, this is 90% of my life. And this is for the 10% yeah, yeah. of when things really, you know, go wrong. And hopefully I don't use this very often. Mm -hmm. But by separating the two, you keep your cost down. And then you can use supplemental to reimburse for random out-of-pocket stuff even if it costs you nothing to go, for which sure, is really cool. Sure. So once you learn how it all works, there are a lot of really cool things on the market. And I talk to people and I explain it and they're like, wow, why or does no one know this? Or you can even like, and everything works in, in like, in almost like puzzle pieces. So depending how you want that picture to look, it depends on how, what puzzle pieces you pick and put together and create that picture. Mm -hmm. And so if you just right now just need something to create a foundation, then we work with that's just that one p puzzle piece mm -hmm. and work with the foundation of it. But then, hey, later on you want to have tack the other pieces and build that out because it is kind of like that you can interconnectivity. You don't have to, you know, put everything together at once. You create the foundation. It's almost like building a house. You start with the foundation, then you start to put up walls and you put up a roof. And so you can build on it with time. You don't have to get the whole enchilada right now. Mm -hmm. And so you, cr you can create a foundation because if that's what makes sense and it works in the budget. And then later on, Hey, you know what, let's put, let's slap the walls on the house now mm -hmm. and start working up and then eventually, you know, cap it off with the roof and have a, f and then have a full package, but you, it can you all honestly be lost me at enchilada. Cause I'm kind of right. right yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm a sucker for Mexican food. Anytime you want the key to my heart is to buy me a taco people <laughs> or G Rito Arlene's beans. Yeah. Or go to Arlene's <laughs> and get the G Rito. That's, that's, that's pitch. There. Arlene's is the, is the bees name. <laughs> Free advertising. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was that taco trick we went to? Um, this roll up. Oh, roll up from truck. Up. Yeah. So yeah, Bryce, yeah. <laughs> Bryce just expanded his business. I'm super stoked to watch him um, grow because I've known him for about two years now. Um, so he used to be set up in front of Morning Glory and they just had the trailer, mm -hmm. but he's done so well over the past couple of years that they're actually moving into a brick and mortar. They have uh, officially kind of like their grand opening this weekend. Mm. They're going to have live graffiti art. Um, they're going to actually host other food trucks outside. Mm -hmm. So they'll be indoors and then they'll be able to feature and help other local food trucks get their feet off the yes. ground by having them stationed out front. So it's really cool to watch what he's doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's a Colorado Springs native. I believe he's from Widefield, okay. if I remember correctly. Yeah, if you guys saw, saw those milkshakes posted on any of our social medias. Oh my uh, gosh, that was Molly and company. Yeah, so they were there in the location yeah. where he's opening up allowing other, yeah. other food trucks. That place is awesome. Yeah. Check it out. What was the intersection? Um, so it's down on Main. And Main Street. Main Street and security. It's 301 yeah. Main Street. I don't know about you, but uh, my stories had like extreme amount more views than regular on yeah. that. On that. And then like. <laughs> I, well, I mean, I'm from the South originally. I'm a sucker for food. Mm -hmm. And you put a piece of cheesecake on top of a milkshake. Like that's, you know, <laughs> I'm sold right there. So yeah, I follow a lot of the Colorado Springs food trucks because I'm mm -hmm. all about supporting local business as much as I can, mm -hmm. you know, and I'd rather put money in their pockets than a chain. 
you know, and watch another entrepreneur be a successful and grow like a dream yes. of theirs. So um, I try to eat at a lot of the food trucks and support mm -hmm. them. But I love that, you know, Bryce is doing that because, yeah, that the food, their food alone is great. But then mm -hmm. we got some pretty killer milkshakes. Pretty afterwards. cool stuff. Like there, there was a yeah. Hawaiian one, a uh, Hawaiian truck. And I'm sure they're going to change it up. Uh, yeah, they will rotate. Mm -hmm. They, um, I think they're going to host people for a few weeks at a time and then rotate other people through. That's so. them getting some exposure, though. Yeah, cool. it's really cool. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I just wanted to shout that out a little bit because it was really awesome. We all sidetracked <laughs> off food. <laughs> Se segue, segue into that. And I guess we could segue uh, into uh, how you guys are in, involved in the business community, how you guys, like some of your guys', I guess, strategies that you guys have used to get in front of people's faces to to help you guys just grow your business. Because your, your business is basically about just getting out there and... Yeah. And, you know, exposure. Well, <laughs> like a lot of entrepreneurs, it's who you know, and you don't have yeah. anyone unless you make those connections. So when we moved here, we really wanted to get, you know, really ingrained in the city, find another, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs and things like that, and just find other people and, you know, kind of find our tribe, which is yeah. really cool. Um, so we did a lot of networking pretty much the first, within just a few months of moving here, I was already networking. So we did a lot of heavy networking for two years. And then, uh, from there started, you know, getting into chamber of commerce. Leo's on the board for Fountain Valley. Nice. Um, I joined 1 million cups as an organizer. Mm -hmm. Um, but for us, we didn't know anyone. So it was really key for us just to get out and meet people, mm -hmm. whether it was a personal acquaintance or a business acquaintance. I mean, it's good to have friendship. Mm -hmm. And so it was a great way for us to get just involved in the community, meet people, and then figure out a way that we can be bigger than ourselves and give back. So mm -hmm. I always try to figure out ways that I can support other people, whether that's bringing notoriety to their business or frequenting their business and patron, you know, being a patron of it or mm -hmm. whatever it is. Uh, you r small local business is the backbone to me of every economy in every city. And Colorado yeah. Springs is full of entrepreneurs. So why not keep everything we can as local as we can? Mm -hmm. You know, so it was a big integral part of us just meeting people. Yeah. And again, it, part of that is meeting people and sharing the message of what we do yeah. and just making connections. And also, I mean, if you just being meet a people, resource people, for people, people will intuitively, not intuitively, maybe intuitively, just be curious about what you do. Like yeah. you don't even really have to bring it up if, if you're just actually making connections with people. Yeah, <laughs> and I got to hit this real quick. Just be able to send somebody somewhere. It's like, hey, I need a fence guy. I need an electrician. I yes. need an auto shop. I need a you know, like HVAC Pokemon. person. <laughs> yeah, I need, you know, I need a videographer, you know, videographer. Like I need a yeah, yeah. marketing person, For social media, crowd, whatever White it is. White pagers is when they actually, yeah, you said actually print people's name and yeah. phone numbers oh, on yeah. paper. <laughs> yeah. You get this big book that used to be left on your doorstep. Yeah, it's nice they to be a resource to people. <laughs> yeah, they kill the whole forest. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, that's, that's one thing about the networking that I really, um, um, got a lot of value out of is not just like you can, you actually meeting other people directly because not necessarily everyone you meet directly is going to be someone that is a potential client or someone you could do business with. Yeah, really However, awesome. though, there's a circle that behind them that you might not know about their, their, their tribe, their circle of mm -hmm. influence or people they know. And so there could be people within their circle that you might not ever get the opportunity to meet because maybe they don't do the same networking things, Yes, but there's still people they know. And so those are people that they can refer to you. And likewise, there are people probably we have met that many other people haven't because of just not traveling in the same circles mm -hmm. in there. And therefore there could be people that we can directly connect with other people. So that exchange, mm -hmm. that really building of, you know, sharing communities and sharing, I mean, sharing the tribe with other people that might mm -hmm. benefit from people, you know, um, is a big part of a key of that. It's not always transactional. It is also, you know, it's very For much sure. about connecting people and creating new relationships from the relationships you have. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of having that whole like six degrees of separation kind of thing that yeah, yeah. I think within all of us, I think we probably could say we probably know most of Colorado, Colorado Springs at this point. For sure, for within sure. Within six degrees. <laughs> it's crazy, man. It's the biggest degrees, little small probably, town, yes. that's for sure. <laughs> Randy, you're really good at uh, networking too. When I first met you at Power Connectors. Yeah, you, you, I remember you, when we met. Yeah, yeah, you, you're good at You really... used to come in, you had that baseball cap oh, on. Oh yeah, I actually, and... I grew out of that hat. It was weird. What I did is I saved, shaved my sides and it, yeah. then I was like, well, that guy's You were hiding behind the hat. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. And then you had to shed the skin. <laughs> New Andrew. Yeah, yeah. So I think I really do think when I when I shaved the sides of my sides of my head, I was more confident of of not wearing the hat. I don't know why I wore the hat. I just felt I needed to wear the hat, and I wore it everywhere. Because like people did, are going to judge you for your hair. What's that? 
<laughs> so because people will judge you for yeah, your yeah, hair. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. No. Or something like that. Or like, it's just stupid things to think yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those, those limiting false beliefs where we don't uh, just self-identify and be authentic. Mm -hmm, for know? sure. And that happens all the time. We're always hiding behind some exterior. And mm -hmm. so I'm a big believer in just be who you are. Yeah. You know, what you here. see is what you get. I'm not a fit for everybody. You're not a fit for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know. I might offend you. Yeah, okay. it happens, <laughs> you know. But, you know, we're all human. And really, it's about the deeper <laughs> level of connection, you know. And I get it. For sure. Um, it's just nice. You Which, know? hey, you guys at, at Power Be Connectors, yourself. you guys even uh, sponsored Power Connectors, I think. Yeah. You guys' yep. name was on the big, we, the big Well, board. and we're still an executive sponsor. We okay. just don't, they're, they, you know, they do the monthly virtual event at this point. We're not back in person as far as that group goes. Mm -hmm. um, but the point of the, the group originally was to provide a lot of mentorship for people that were either new to the area, new mm -hmm. in business, or new to networking. Yes. Because it's very intimidating to walk into a room of 75 people yes. and you're the new person. Mm -hmm. And all these other people you can see are having great conversations because they already know each other. Yes, so exactly. I always look for the most socially <laughs> awkward person in the room and nice. try to grab them because <laughs> I remember being there. Mm -hmm. You know, when I walked in this, I remember the first networking event I ever went to, it was the Tri Lakes Chamber uh, holiday one that they do at the bank. And I walked in the door and Frank Sinclair, which everybody knows Frank Sinclair, walks up to me and he goes, you're new here. Where are you from? what do you do? Who do you need to meet? And I was like, okay. Nice. And of course I was like, well, I just relocated here from Texas. Sorry guys. I know I'm part of the problem. <laughs> um, but I'm glad that people don't th say that about Kansas City, <laughs> right? Because there's a lot of you're people on the coming list from Kansas too, City. Right? <laughs> you're too close. Like yeah, you're yeah. a bordering state. <laughs> so um, it's really funny though, because uh, you know he introduced me to a couple other people that were from Texas. Like we were all going to know each other, mm -hmm. but at least we had something to bond over and chat about. You know, we talked about how we all miss like barbecue and stuff like that, or whatever it was. Um, but it's you know it's nice to be the new person in the war room and somebody identify that and, mm -hmm. and, and and walk over and let that barrier down for you. Like hey, I can see you're the new person here you know what's your name I'm yeah, you know yeah. so and so you know what brings you out tonight H how can we help you whatever it is you know and just make them feel like they're part of the group or part of the community so they can actually get out and engage with people because mm -hmm. going to an event does you no good if you sit in the corner and not talk to anyone yeah you know well, I mean if no one would have talked to me or if I wouldn't have got up to talk to anyone or or you know it was just a bad experience maybe I wouldn't be doing this podcast right yeah now. I don't yeah know. <laughs> you never know and that's the thing is just you know I introducing people, you mm -hmm. know, what do you do? Let me introduce to this person that knows a lot of people and this person knows a lot of people or maybe this industry or this person runs this business or whatever it is and just connecting, For sure. you know, and Colorado Springs is really great about connection, mm -hmm. you know, but um, yeah, I mean, we still do power connectors actually this coming uh, month. So it's the fourth Tuesday of every month. They're going to do the virtual and they're going to do the actual networking awards okay. that they were supposed to do back in April, yes, whenever COVID, COVID first happened. Mm -hmm. So they are going to be recognizing a lot of different people for different things. Mm -hmm. I know Frank won an award. Um, I can't remember who else took one home because I hadn't seen all the ones they gave away yet. But mm -hmm. it was, you know, most influential, most, um, I don't know, like One Million Cups won networking group, uh, oh, yeah. best networking group f with a purpose, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. So that'll be fun to watch. So if you guys haven't tuned in, I think you can find it on Meetup. I know LinkedIn. Um, but it'll be a good virtual event just to tune into and see kind of some of the powerhouse people that are mm -hmm. in Colorado Springs. So if you're new, go to the Power Connectors page and find it and get online for the fourth Tuesday of the month. Yeah, do it. Yes, <laughs> go find some people to meet with. <laughs> I, uh, I haven't been to the virtual one, so uh, maybe I should put that in my, my calendar as well. Yeah, it's, I haven't attended all of them because, uh -huh. I, I mean, like a lot of people, I kind of got virtualed out. Even though I'm a sponsor and I like to support the group, I, you know, was like, I can't, I can't do it today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've had five other Zooms and I'm done, you know, but um, we try to be on there as much as we possibly can. I yeah. think we've only missed a handful. And if I don't hop on, Leo usually will, which is yeah. really nice because we can kind of tag team. Yeah, you guys stuff. got that tag team thing going on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, yeah. we, we, when we were at Heartland Connect. Uh, I didn't see Leo, and I was like, oh, where's Leo? And then it happens all up, the time. And he was outside doing a Zoom meeting, uh, and you were inside, uh, you know, networking, and it was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> it is funny, because then when we're not together, people are like, where's Leo? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I see who your favorite is. I get who. I okay. Get <laughs> no one ever asked me where you're at, though. I, I know. know. Oh, dang. I feel like you finally got away. Huh? <laughs> well, they don't ask you that, because <laughs> she's usually there already. <laughs> yeah. Right? No, it is funny, though. Um, it is nice to, part to have a partner in the business. Yes. It's not easy by mm -hmm. any means but it is very nice to have that support because like most people if you don't have the support you never know how far you're going to get mm -hmm. i can definitely say we n would not be where we are without being able to have each other for to sure. lean on for sure for sure so so what do you guys think have been some of the biggest challenges you guys have had to face in growing your business one not knowing learning what we don't know mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff to learn about in the medical market and just mm -hmm. healthcare and benefits and how some rules apply and 
being in a state that is very military, you know, based, you mm -hmm. know, learning, you know, about VA and TRICARE and all these things and where do the gaps fall for people, mm -hmm. you know, um, and then obviously trying to share the message about what we do. I mean, let's face it, we're insurance, we're nobody's priority, <laughs> you know, sure. so just having people be willing to open up the conversation, mm -hmm. I think. Um, so I think education and then just, again, sharing it with okay. people. How have you been able to do that? Stuff like this. Okay, yeah. no. nice. He may say our challenges are different. I mean, okay, I don't yeah, know. That's what do you think? What? Sorry, Leo? Challenges? Yeah. No, I mean, uh, the biggest challenge is, yeah, it's just being able to get, a lot of people have the pre, the, you know, the pre, um, preconception of like, dude, hate insurance. I hate having to pay for it. It's, you know, until they actually need to use it, that's when they actually found out the value of like, okay, good thing I had this in place. But mm -hmm. before that time, it's that, it's that thing you pay every month that you're like, I haven't like been I any. Use this. I never yeah. use it. I haven't been in a car accident. I haven't, you know, we haven't had hail damage or I haven't had to fix anything in my house or a fire, but then, mm -hmm. you know, but then you do have that fire in your house or you do have that pipe that breaks and floods your home accident. and you do have that car accident. Then it's like, well, thank God I had insurance, you know, and that's when it becomes, it sinks mm -hmm. home. And so it's kind of getting that, getting rid of that stigma of insurance being, we're not the bad guy. yeah, we're not the bad guy, mm -hmm. you know, and, and obviously it's not for everybody. I've met people that downright just like, I do not have insurance on anything. Mm -hmm. I'll just, if something happens, I'll pay cash. Great. I well, I hope, bankruptcy. <laughs> <laughs> or I have actually said yeah. someone to me, actually told me, he's like, just then, you know, who actually explained, try to explain that point to me. It's like, so that you think bank, strategy. the strategy would be like, yeah, I'll just claim bankruptcy and I don't, and then all my debts will be wiped away. It's like, but then you've claimed bankruptcy, which Stay follows you for right. time. It's like, and also that's just a, uh, a crappy way to, to do things, I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it is. So. This is an irresponsible way to, because, I mean, you owe people money and you're you're just going to, oh, I'm not going to pay it. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> and especially when you think about where, okay, well, you owe people money. Mm -hmm. Well, there might be small businesses that were the vendor or the person that fixed that, your vehicle or whatever. It was the provider mm -hmm. of whatever services to, like, you know, put the roof on your house um, and you don't have insurance. And so you're just going to claim bankruptcy. Though, so that person who fixed your roof mm -hmm. isn't going to get paid. And maybe I need to get a doctor on, on the show, yeah. uh, but I do think medical bills are ridiculous. Have you had expensive. Daniel Paul on yet? Yes, Daniel. Dr. Daniel Paul from Easy Orthopedics? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, you need to have him on. Well, I, yeah, I mean, like, I'm just thinking, like, I don't think it's fair at all for the way they, they, they're going to charge you a thousand dollars for like a couple hours or just like it's yeah it's the ridiculous. way it's structured and yeah. stuff well and once you have <laughs> your eyes open to how it actually works mm -hmm. talking to a medical professional that has been in the system and has seen firsthand the way that things are dictated because of insurance companies mm -hmm. it is it's shocking yeah you know uh when you talk about people having surgical quotas that they literally have to meet and you have to Hey, you gotta, you better find somebody to cut on because mm. you got a quota to meet. You know, it's like you literally are being told how to treat your, your patients Politics are really instead up of yeah. you <laughs> treating them the way that you want. It's dictated by what, you know, is coming from above. And that's really, really hard because you can't, you get into it for the right reasons, but then you can't operate the way you want to, mm. which is why you have a lot of doctors that get disgruntled and form their own places like mm -hmm. direct primary care offices or people that started, you know, like, you know, Daniel Paul, he's a mobile orthopedic doctor. Okay. You know, he does, literally will come to your house and stitch you up and all that stuff. What's it, orthopedic? Easy orthopedics. What's, um, what's uh, that, that mean? Uh, so he does a lot of like soft tissue, yeah, muscle, okay. yeah, um, stuff like that, broken bones, okay. that kind of stuff. He I was thinking with. orthopedics. Yeah, no, 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 that's a whole different thing. Yeah, um, but I mean, he's, I mean, he's a, I mean, a light, I mean, he's his specialty was orthopedic. He was an orthopedic surgeon, but obviously, you go through med school, and then mm -hmm. from med school, then you choose like your specific field. So he's. I mean, he could do everything from stitches to setting bones, all that kinds of stuff. Yeah, it's a pretty cool, diagnosis. he's a pretty cool guy. Yeah, and he he'd be a good person to have on just sure. to hear yeah, about his side from. He'd be a great person because he can give you the perspective yeah. of like, where the medical, like all the things that happen in medical practices and in the medical system. And then the reason why he actually separated that from that, because mm -hmm. from an, from his, you know, this, an integrity point of view and just being, just being straightforward and transparent. Um, he did not like how the system was working where, mm -hmm. you know, essentially if you're working at a practice, if you do not, you know, if you do not perform enough surgeries or do so many X procedures, then essentially they'd let you go from a practice because you're not generating enough revenue. It's it a bad incentivization. Yeah, it's not it about, is it's crazy. Not, it wasn't about care, it was about generating money. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's really and, sad. And so- and It's a messed is, up, messed up system. It's a mess, yeah. yeah. And, it's a, and it's crazy when you find out that if certain things are built certain ways, depending on how you decide you wanna pay for it. If you decide to go through insurance and pay for your medical expenses using your insurance carrier, there's this fee. But if you decide to say, hey, I don't have insurance, what would be my cash payment? They charge you this much for the exact same procedure. Yeah, it's like MRI goes from $1,500 to like 500 bucks. 
Okay. You know, things and like that. And there's discrepancies like that across the board. So it's mm-hmm. it's in some so in some cases you actually can pay less if you decide to pay just in a straight cash payment than if you actually try to file it through an insurance carrier. Mm-hmm. You'd actually have more expenses that you'd have to be responsible for than if you just say, Hey, you know what, I'll just pay cash on that. Yeah, yeah. And so that's so those kinds of, you know, and and we all learned that, and we ourselves only learn this by having to dive into this industry and go into the insurance because industry and find out so like, bad. and find these things out, you know, mm-hmm. um, through speaking with people who have worked in the medical, in the medical system and then left and them sharing their experience of what it was like to be in the system and now to be broken away from it mm-hmm. and what the differences are to where medications are severely overpriced, um, where and it, you, you can get at a direct primary care physician's office, you can get a, pers- a full prescription of 30 pills for a dollar and 20 cents. Oh, wow. Whereas as you go to go pick that up at CVS or some other large brand pharmacy, they're charging you 10 they're times the price <laughs> because they ha- they're in the business of charging high prices for pharmaceuticals mm-hmm. because they have to keep their doors open. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. And so there's some things in the system that it's like, once you can peel away the layers and see what actually truly is underneath, it's, 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 I mean, it's, I mean, it's like mind blowing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's nuts. So, I mean, it, I, you can understand why people have a bad taste in their mouth. I mean, you go to the doctor, it costs a ton of money. You have insurance, you pay a ton of money for it, and then you got to use it and you think it protects you and you got to pay a ton of money for using it. Mm-hmm. It, it. You know, it just doesn't work for a lot of people. And I was the same way. I do not like insurance people. I didn't want to be sold anything because I thought I knew everything and I thought I was <laughs> good and all that stuff. So I try to operate from a very, you know, n- non-biased, here's what we do. If it doesn't make sense, that's okay. Know what your options are, it, though. I mean, I mean, it's just, it doesn't do, I don't understand insurance people, man, because they, in a lot of ways, will discourage somebody into buying a product that is not the right fit for them. Mm-hmm. And then that person just finds out and is angry about it. You yeah. know, for me, it's like, I'd rather steer you the right way and say, hey, this is not a fit for you and you should do this instead, mm-hmm. instead of just trying to make a quick buck. And unfortunately, you get a lot of people that come into the insurance market that are bad representatives. You get a lot of turnover in the insurance market, which is also a reason why we kind of get a bad rap as insurance people, because we don't always stay around, mm-hmm. you know? And aside from that, there's just a lot of, you know, unfortunately, people have seen the costs associated with it and all of it just frustrates people and makes them angry. So people don't want to talk about insurance. No. And I get it, like, <laughs> I totally get it. Um, it's just, it's nice to be able to meet people and have a general conversation. And whenever they understand exactly what their options are, it's like, wow, mm-hmm. I'm really glad we sat down and chatted today. So right. it's nice so to be able to educate people. Um, education really is key in everything that you do as a business. Mm-hmm. Why are you different? Why are you above the rest? What makes you unique? Whatever it is, you know, so you have to be able to share that message with people, you know? For sure. So how could people get a hold of you guys? If we do. To talk about that? Yeah, we do have a website. Um, we're going through a rebrand right now because we left our original single carrier life to expand into our agency. Mm-hmm. So um, we are re- doing a rebrand. So don't judge the website as of yet. It hasn't been updated. But you can find us at newnesspartners.com. Mm-hmm. It's N-U-N-E-S partners.com. Um, it's got links on there for obviously connecting with us, phone number, email, that kind of stuff. So does that mean you guys aren't uh, affiliated with Athlac anymore? No, we are. It okay. is. It's just one of the carriers that we, re- re- we represent. So we okay. offer a variety of different programs. Athlac is one of the carriers that we represent. And again, we started with them because, you know, at the end of the day, you have to keep your household afloat. Mm-hmm. And so... I like putting money in people's house, you know, in their pockets so they can actually pay their mortgage and feed their families mm-hmm. and that stuff before we pay doctors and hospitals. So we do represent Aflac as a supplemental carrier, but we also represent two different uh, companies for health, medical cost sharing. And mm-hmm. then we work with Peak Med as a direct primary care provider. Okay. Um, and we are expanding from there. We offer stuff like dental and vision. We also offer life insurance and tax-free retirement. Okay. So we decided we needed to be a solution for a lot of people. Nice. And we want to make sure that if one service that we offer is not an exact fit, there, there might be something else that is. Okay. Plus, it gives us the opportunity to put together a more holistic and cohesive package for businesses, depending on what their needs are. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, hey, I only want that and some retirement. Okay, yeah, we can yeah. do that. So you, you know? guys... Uh Oh, you're on brand now, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we officially, we incorporated (laughs) back in November last year and we launched Nunes Partners um, officially in November, which we really spent a lot of time during COVID over the past, you know, six, Mm -hmm. seven months, you know, doing our rebrand. So we have new business cards that are coming in. We've got a new website that's being built, that's being launched. Um, So if you go to our current website, it doesn't have all the information as far as what we do on there. So hopefully people just call. We would love to have the conversation and clarify your questions. Um, but the new mm-hmm. website, once it launches, will have all of the information as far as all of our different services and how they help people. Mm-hmm. So it's actually really excited to go through 
the whole branding process, but yeah, yeah. man, that's a lot of work too. Yeah, yeah. It really is. Yeah. It's like coming it's, up I with a name that part about it, and colors it work, and all yeah. those things and What's the yeah. colors? So we went with a, a nice navy blue, which okay. we really, really love the navy blue with like a smoky blue and a charcoal gray okay. and then like Smarties. a sage. Yep. Yeah, very <laughs> similar to this. And then a, a sage green just as accent. So um, we really love the color scheme and I don't know, it's going to be nice to go have a fresh look. Yeah. But then now it confuses everyone because just like you asked, it's like, so you're not doing Okay. So right. I've had clients that, you know, they follow our Facebook page because we have a Facebook page as well. And you they're still like, represent. yes, we still represent them, um, mm -hmm. but it's not the only thing we do now. So we don't want to mm -hmm. pigeonhole ourselves as just obviously that carrier. Exactly. Um, right. It'd be like, you know, people like, that it's are, it's, it's, you know, at the end of the day, you know, Affleck is a tool. Yeah. And so we had that in our toolbox, but guess what? It only allowed us to work on one type of situation. Mm -hmm. One, you know, Hey, it's, it's like a screwdriver. Okay. Well, I don't need a screwdriver. I need a hammer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, this person needs a hammer. Okay. Let's work and get a hammer on. So we added the hammer to the tool chest. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Great. Now we can, now we can screw. Now we can hammer. It's like, well, you know, someone else. I need someone to, you know, to, to fix this leak. Oh, darn it. We need a plumber. Okay. So let's get some wrenches. So we just add, started adding more stuff to yes, the toolbox. Yes. So instead of being a single tool carrier, Aflac, we, you know, we now have lots of tools in our tool toolbox. So that way we can fix a lot of different problems yeah. for people. What's it the is. ones you're most excited? What's the one, the one you're most excited about? Oh man. If as you far could. as pro sol solving problems? Uh, just get you excited. Uh, problem solving or it. It puts Hon money back in your, like, uh, honestly, I mean, I still get super excited about what Aflac does because okay. <laughs> I mean, I've got a client of mine right now, um, that he has a, a workman's comp injury and his policy is still going to pay on top of workman's comp. And at this point, from what I figured up, we're going to put about $6,000 back in his pocket. Mm. So he actually can pay his mortgage and feed his family. I've yeah. had people that were business owners that were out of work from injuries mm -hmm. where they moved that liability to Aflac and it was a, it, it put a lot of money back in their pocket at the end of the day because they weren't able to go to work, mm -hmm. which was really, really nice. And it took the liability off the company. So instead of the company taking a huge hit to continue paying that business owner's salary, that was now moved to us as an insurance company which gave them the ability to be more flexible with their, you know, obviously their business. Yeah. But we do, I mean, when not knowing what Aflac does, it's a variety of things. The bad part is we only advertise pretty much an accident plan or mm -hmm. it, it's advertised as it pays you money for what medical insurance doesn't cover, alluding to the fact that you have to have major medical to have it. Mm. You don't. You could okay. have no insurance, you could have, you know, TRICARE, it, it could be a workman's comp claim, things like that. There's still a lot of things that we do to pay people back on top of what they already have in place or if they have zero in place. Mm -hmm. So when at the end of the day, the, I remember the very first claim that I filed with Aflac was a woman that had had a cancer policy for 16 years and she was diagnosed with breast cancer. And the first check we sent her for diagnosis was $14,000. Nice. <laughs> Tell me that can't make a difference for you in a time of need. Yeah, yeah. And you even know? if it's not even like huge payouts like that, I mean, you know, recently had bucks someone to help that, pay the bills, whatever you know, it's, it is. You know, our policies can help provide, you know, financial support when someone needs to take maternity leave after childbirth. Yeah. And so one of my recent policy holders had child, you know, had recent childbirth. And if it wasn't for her being, you know, the short-term disability policy that she had, which provided her sup sup supplemented her income when she was not working mm -hmm. to, to stay home after childbirth, um, you know, it was her, her rent wouldn't have been covered, wouldn't have been covered. She was going to lose, you know, she would have been behind on rent and she would also have been behind on her car payment. Us being able to provide those, you know, the policy being able to pro provide those benefits to her, make sure her rent was paid, make sure her car payment was paid. So that way she can spend the first weeks of having a brand new baby, um, you know, in her life, actually getting to connect with that baby mm -hmm. instead of freaking out and being paranoid and going, oh my gosh, I got to get back to work because yeah. if I don't start having a paycheck soon, car's gone, you know, my roof is gone and I've now got a newborn. Yeah. And so when you get to hear those kinds of testimonials from people going, thank you so much, you don't understand how this, how this policy has helped me so much and making sure that my livelihood continued on, even though I was not being able to do the thing that pays for everything else going to work, mm -hmm. um, having that in place and making and knowing that, Hey, if that impacted their life in a positive way. It's like, it makes it worth it going, okay, there's a reason why I should still continue to work in insurance and still continue to at least educate people on how it helps mm -hmm. and see if it can provide, you know, support for them. Cause you never know when life's going to happen. You never know when all of a sudden, oops. Yeah. Hey, guess what? We got, you know, we got another bundle of joy jo joining the family. And now someone's going to be potentially out of work for a, a period of time after maternity and, you know, or even, you know, in the situations of you have that slip and fall or, that, you know, and, an, you know, a major accident or an illness, or um, we, we, you know, we've already dealt with, you know, COVID-19 cases where we have policyholders who were 
positively diagnosed with COVID-19 or we just came down very, very sick and we're mm -hmm. presumed positive with COVID-19. Quarantine and, two weeks out. And not even two weeks. I mean, so the, yes, they were officially had, they had a quarantine, but guess what? After two weeks, they were still symptomatic and told to stay home. You have to have to three negative home. tests in a row before you can be cleared to come back to work. Yeah. So you guys, uh, did that help? The and so for those people in there, and so their sick pay had run out at their job, they had disability pay that kicked in for illness. And so therefore they were able to go a third week, a fourth week, a fifth mm -hmm. week, a sixth week of being sick with presume, presumably COVID and not have to worry about Hey, they can't go to work. Obviously, work's not going to let them come back early because yeah. they're sick and they don't want them to contaminate the rest of the crew. They were able to stay home, take care of their illness, and still make sure that they had a roof yeah. over their head, the lights were on, there's food on the table. And that's when the job becomes yeah. really rewarding is that you know you're making a difference. It Even if it's just for one day in someone's life, pockets. if mm -hmm. not longer, knowing that, you know, that they are getting, you know, that that the, these benefits are actually helping make sure that yeah. they're that they can go get through this crazy life event, whether an illness or an injury, and get back to being life like normal, um, getting them through that hard part and not having to worry about the financial piece of things um, makes it worthwhile. For sure. Yeah. Brandy. It's really exciting to do exactly what, I mean, to do what we do in general, I mm -hmm. feel like it's a blessing because our eyes were open to a lot of things whenever we experienced, you know, our out of pocket. And, you know, it's really nice to be able to keep uh, a medical crisis from becoming a financial crisis for people. For sure. And so I get really excited about that part, but it's really cool to be able to, to talk to people and put things in place for them that they didn't even know they had access to. Mm -hmm. You're like, man, I really thought I'd never be able to do this. It wasn't affordable. And I'm so exact, you know, so happy that there are these things on the market that can do this. I've never felt so cared for, you know, things like that. It, it's really neat, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really cool. It's a, it's a challenge. Like as an entrepreneur, you wake up every day and you don't know what you don't know and the market's constantly changing. So you're constantly figuring out new ways to do things or, you know, things that are changing in the marketplace that you got to educate and learn about and how that affects your business or affects your clients. So it's constant evolution and growing, mm -hmm. which keeps it fresh and interesting, which is really nice because mm -hmm. no day is ever the same, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. So I know there's one thing you guys wanted to specifically promote yeah. uh, today on this episode. Uh, do you guys want to talk about that? Yeah. Like Leo's looking at me like, y hey, you need to talk about this. Okay, so who's, who's taking this one? It's, uh, <laughs> no, well, it's, it's, the, it, it's so, it needs uh, to start really with, the, well, what it is and, and why you decided to do this in the first place. Because this really started to, because you were affected personally by it with one of your clients. Yeah. So um, so what, what Andrew's referring to is we started the nonprofit challenge. Um, it's a Facebook challenge. Um, like many have seen before, or similar to what many have seen before. Mm -hmm. But this one has a very specific purpose. Uh, the purpose came from, and the idea came from, uh, learning that uh, there's a nonprofit that existed here in Colorado Springs for over 55 years. And recently, I just even learned that there was another nonprofit that was here for about 36 years that closed their doors um, actually about uh, th three or four months ago. And then reached Pikes Peak, which has been serving the Colorado Springs, Pikes Peak region, for 55 years, closed their doors um, a little over a week or two ago mm -hmm. um, due to essentially not having the funding, not having the resources to continue on their mission of helping the people in the community. And both these nonprofits were working more in the um, in the sector of helping people that are in that that, um, you know, uh, in the, uh, the poverty stricken, you know, mm -hmm. people that are really needing the help to utilities, clothing, food, food um, you know, all these kind of, that kind of support and help for those that are a little bit less fortunate than us, than us and even more, more unfortunate than we are in the position we are. And so two of those organizations shut their doors primarily due to COVID because of the fact there is a lack of fundraising, a lack of donations. Um, obviously, people are going through hard economic times across the board, people getting furloughed and having lays off, layoffs and stuff like that. So granted, yes. Yeah, so people are going to be a little bit tighter on the pocketbook. We understand that. But big events that they would hold, such as fundraisers, um, galas, um, you know, silent auctions, 5Ks. And this is across the board for, for nonprofits across the, the entire um, city as well as the country. We can't hold those large events. You can't have so many people in the same room because of COVID. Mm -hmm. And so those those fundraisers, those events that used to help generate people to, you know, and, and entice people to open up the checkbook and start donating – aren't being helped. And so without that front of mind awareness, a lot of people have have forgotten about those 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 nonprofits that they supported just a year ago mm -hmm. um, because they, they didn't have that breakfast, that lunch, that fundraiser. And so it's, it's a very serious problem. And so after hearing the story of Reach closing down, which was actually one of the clients that I did take care of, so I knew their people personally. Mm -hmm. And for me, that impacts me because now those people were, there were people there that worked there were employees. Now they're actually are part of the unemployed market. Mm. Um, and so now you have a kind of a vicious cycle where 
the exact services that they were out there fighting to provide for the people in the community might be the exact same services they need because now they're in the same boat as a lot of people as being unemployed, mm -hmm. but now the services are gone. Mm -hmm. So now you've created a cycle of you know, not being able to provide the resource and the people that, that the used to provide the resource are now the ones needing the resource. Yeah. Um, so what can we do to change that? How can we bring awareness? And so that's where the idea came um, from for the, uh, the nonprofit challenge, NP challenge on Facebook. And pretty much in a nutshell is that you go on, make a live video of yourself on Facebook saying, hey, this is who I am and I wanna support these local nonprofits because we want to, cheap, eh, want to try and keep the resources within our local community, help our neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, and so, hey, these three local nonprofits, I'm gonna, su I'm gonna support them by either donating time, so volunteerism, um, money, obviously cash always helps, it's a big one, and then are also, or also resources. So whether it be a toy drive, a food drive, blankets, clothing, you know, some type of resources mm -hmm. that they can then pass on to the people that they, that they serve. And so pick three nonprofits, say how you want to support those, talk a little bit about each nonprofit so you can share with the audience what exactly they do, who they help, what their mission is, and then choose three people that you know to do the challenge themselves, to pick their own three nonprofits they want to support and donate to, and then keep that ball rolling. And mm -hmm. the, the power of numbers, three, you know, three becomes nine, nine becomes 27, 27 becomes 81, and it just... Mm -hmm. grows and grows yeah. from that movement it's not like 10 steps in it's like a million right so yeah once you actually go once you actually <laughs> step once you actually go 15 steps in it actually reaches 65 million. Oh wow Which so if we were to keep that trend going for 15 levels mm -hmm. it actually impacts 60 it'd be 65 mm -hmm. million donations if, that could if be made every nomination did the committed yeah. yes yeah, very yeah everyone that gets everyone that does get challenged does the challenge actually does the contribution and then challenge three others that continue it on mm -hmm. it would reach yeah in 15 levels it reached 65 million donations that can be made and think about the impact even if everyone just donated one dollar to three charities yeah. just three bucks out of your pocket and that's 65 million dollars mm -hmm. raised yeah. it's like how much help could you think that could provide in our community mm -hmm. It'd be a lot. We want to. <laughs> we want to put. Uh, we, we we the city wants to raise five million dollars so we can put patio heaters on the streets out here so we can uh, sit our pretentious butts at restaurants on the weekend. But okay. imagine what that cold. money could do to help people <laughs> and resources in For the community. Sure. You know, mm -hmm. it cracks me up where we spend our money as mm -hmm. humans when there's a greater need out there for what we can help support. You know, yeah. so what we did was. Um, you know, like we stopped the other day at uh, Gold Star Pies. They were doing the Tolly Tolly Pie Night, right? So Touch of Love International provides micro loans for poor entre entrepreneurs in other countries, which I'm all about supporting entrepreneurship. And I thought that was really cool. So we stopped by, picked up a couple pies. You got to name your own slice. I got a pie. Then, yeah, you, you <laughs> yeah. won one. And then we donated them. You know, like I know the uh, Humane Society, which is a nonprofit here in Colorado Springs, was looking for blankets. You know, uh, Springs Res Rescue Min Mission is looking for uh, winter coats and things like that. You know, you can easily go to Goodwill and buy a jacket for a few bucks and go drop it off at the, you know, the shelter. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just paying it forward to other people. We forget how, you know, grateful Lost. we should be and because of what we have. And there's a lot of other people out there that need what we, you know, mm -hmm. what we can provide, whether it's a, you know, a 75 cent can of corn, you know, or whatever it is, you know. So um, it's just about bringing awareness. We've had a lot of people donate. We've had a lot of people uh, donate for the very first time, which was really, really cool mm -hmm. to just bring awareness to, hey, giving back in general. Um, but we obviously want it to spread. You yeah. know, the goal is obviously to get, you know, as many people involved as we can. So those of you that have not done your videos, you know who you are. <laughs> we know who you are. But also bring Go to your awareness. challenge video. <laughs> yeah. And part of it though too is, is, is part of the goal is also bringing awareness and education because um, there's 1,500 different nonprofits here in the Colorado Springs area, yeah. 1,500, it's mm -hmm. huge. There um, I can't, you know, and, and before I even started this challenge, I mean, and even since I've started the challenge, there's nonprofits that people are speaking up with about who they're gonna um, support. I was like, I never heard of them before. And the great thing is that in your in your video, you want to tag the nonprofits that you're going to be um, yes. that you're going to be donating mm -hmm. to. So that way, if someone watches your video, you can click that nonprofit and then go to their page, and then you can learn more about them and go. You know what? This is a great nonprofit. I should maybe learn more about them. Maybe this would be a nonprofit that I support on a regular basis because you can, you might feel a connection with the mission that they have, their mm -hmm. purpose, and so bringing awareness to the different nonprofits that exist in the area and what their purpose and mission is, is also part of the goal too, because that could bring longe longevity of donations and support if more people are aware that they exist. Um, you know, there's, 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 like I said, there's the, there's plenty of nonprofits out there that get no limelight, no um, sort of um, recognition about what they do and who they help. And so this can bring awareness. And, uh, you know, and so like, for instance, uh, the, the um, 
Fountain Public Safety Department Auxiliary um, is actually going to be doing a car wash tomorrow at Fire Station 1 down in Fountain um, to raise money and also to collect unwrapped boys and girls toys Mm -hmm. um, for their toy drive because their whole thing is they want to provide families with a fantastic holiday season. Uh, They served 300 people, 300 families last year with gifts. They expect that 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 um, that number to double this year due to everything that's going on. However, that number that number is going to double as far as families are going to help this year. However, though, they're fifteen thousand dollars behind on fundraising because Mm -hmm. of all the of all the hindrances we've had due to obviously the pandemic. So the need is higher, but the donations right now are lower. So they're so Things, you know, bringing that awareness that, hey, guess what? The need is still there, and it's probably more this year than last year, yet the donations are. We have to bring awareness, share that there's these nonprofits out there doing these car washes. Um, Last week, a good friend of mine who owns a business here, um, SoCo Customs, participated in a really cool car show with some other Mm -hmm. local vendors, Ceramic Pro um, of Colorado Springs, and they were raising money for um, suicide prevention of uh, Pikes Peak suicide prevention. Mm -hmm. Um, So there's a lot of things that actually happen on a week to week basis, getting the getting the name, getting the publicity out there, um, sharing that so that people can see that and then also participate and help with those fun driving efforts is also a key part of the nonprofit challenges, you know, being able to share, hey, not just to do the challenge itself, Mm -hmm. awareness, what other events are going on? Who else can I help? Yeah, it's fun and it feels good. Yes, it but, does, uh, and it warms yeah. the heart. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I mean, there's something that comes from when you actually get get outside yourself and actually mm-hmm. do good for others. There's a feeling that you get, and it's like if you haven't done it, you won't know what that feeling is until you actually do it, and you go, "Wow, you know, what? I just probably just made a change in someone's life, whether it just be for a short period of time, where you you, you made the difference in someone's holiday season, where they were able to you know provide gifts to their to their kids mm-hmm. and see smiles on on Christmas morning. I mean. That's, that's going to be a lot of yeah. families, sadly, this year. Yeah, you know, that's an amazing a lot of feeling. People you that won't be able to provide you can't for their buy children. that. So you can't buy that anywhere. And also, I mean, think about uh, uh, Tony Robbins. Uh, I don't know if you guys know about his Thanksgiving turkeys that he gives every Thanksgiving, but that was because someone came to his house when he was like a teenager, and now he's given out millions of uh, just because of someone doing that. So maybe you doing something might lead to someone who blows up and then yeah. gives back a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so, exactly. yeah, you never know. And again, it's, uh, you know, small, small impact. You know, it starts, you know, ripples start in the middle. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to make waves somehow. It starts in one central location and from there, it, you just want it to spread. Mm-hmm. So if we can get people to understand the, you know, the mission is just do what you can. Again, whether it's, you know, a few bucks, an hour of your time or the old, mm-hmm. cl- you know, coat that's in your closet. If you're not using it, give it to somebody else that really needs mm-hmm. it, you know, um, because we want the community to continue being served. We don't want these nonprofits to shut down yeah. and that continue to be a trend. And we don't want people to lose their jobs. Yeah. You know, um, there yeah. are I looked at the other day, it was like 20,000 nonprofits in Colorado in the state, six uh, percent of the employment market. Oh, well, wow. you know, so imagine in a state of five point seven billion people. Mm hmm. Yeah. And there's already been some million million thank you yeah. <laughs> million people. and there's and there's already there's already been articles written by the New York Times and other um, there's 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 nonprofit uh, magazines and organizations that write in relation to the um, operations of nonprofits and they've mm-hmm. and there's already multiple stories that are out there that are estimating that one third of all nonprofits in the United States are going to close within the next year in relate in you know direct caused by um, the by COVID mm-hmm. because of the restrictions and the lack of fundraising and things like that and you know, when you think about there's almost 1.5 million nonprofits in the country, that's about half a million nonprofits that could sh- that could shut the doors within the next 12 months mm-hmm. that employ um, 4 million people. Um, so 4 million, un- 4 million added to the unemployment market, half a million nonprofits shutting their doors and their resources mm-hmm. and services no longer providing to the community. So it's, you know, it's, it's getting, you know, it's getting hit from the front and from the back. And so, mm-hmm. we, you know, we are the ones that have to change that. We For have sure. to take action. Um, and it starts small, but then it grows big, you know, and it's, it's, you know, it's, how do you, you know, how do you get from here to there? Mm-hmm. One step at a time, how do you eat an elephant one step at a time, you know, one bite at a time. It's like big things can happen, you know, just by taking small little actions. Do you, do you know someone that could get you guys on the news to talk about this? Um, no, we haven't I dug that so. deep. We haven't actually got that far as far as getting on the TV. KRDO needs to call us. <laughs> yes. If you know someone from KRDO, tell them to call us. <laughs> no, it'd be great. It'd be great to share that that message um, on television. We're but local, I think there's yeah. certain like levers that you could pull that could really help this uh, take forward. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we do have I to mean, actually like start wrapping up here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, do you guys have anything else you want to promote? 
I don't think so. Obviously, give us a call if you guys are tired of your disgruntled <laughs> system of major medical. Um, we'd love to have that conversation and see if there's something we can help with. But aside from that, um, yeah, you go check out the uh, hashtag NP challenge. Mm -hmm. We would love your check support. Check out the page, put like that, it, share it. You could put that in, in the search uh, of, of uh, Facebook. There's a search button. Just put hashtag NP challenge. And you'll Just, find the other videos. You'll find, you'll find the other videos. You'll find yep. the page. Uh, and you guys can really uh, uh, make an impact if you yeah. help participate. Yeah. Like it, share it. Don't wait to be challenged. You don't have to wait for someone to challenge you to jump yeah. in on the challenge. Be the first. Be yeah. that. Be you know. Be ground zero and be the person that you go out there and and, and uh, mm -hmm. begin it and then challenge through your friends and really, make them do the same thing. All it takes is either like some of those. Another one of those big levers is you know, getting an influencer to do it. That would be huge. Uh, huge. Huge. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And. Uh, <laughs> And yeah, I think that'd be like, cause, yeah. cause that when you get someone with like a lot, the big following, uh, they, they, they're called influencers for a reason because they influence people. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we need some influencers. Send them our way. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And this is not limited just to the Colorado Springs area. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, we want try and support local, um, help the people in your neighborhood. But if you are in the neighborhood of Phoenix, if you are in yeah. Dallas, if you are in, if you're Kansas in Kansas City, City <laughs> it's like you have nonprofits that need help too. This is not something that mm -hmm. is just a Colorado Springs problem. It's not just a Colorado problem. It's a nationwide problem mm -hmm. that global, are, probably. it's yeah. probably global <laughs> too. Um, so yeah, so share it in your community, start it in your community and, you know, be that, be that force of change and make an impact and actually do something for the good of others. I mean, I think that's, we all say, you know, I got to find my purpose in life. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, there's, I think there should be a unique purpose. I mean, there or a common purpose that we all have in life is, is to make this world a better place mm -hmm. um, than the way we, you know, leave this world a better place than the way that, than we came into it mm -hmm. um, and, and make an impact on other people's lives. Cause then that's how you create a legacy is by the, 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 the changes and the impact you made on other people's lives. Not because you have your name in some history book. Mm -hmm. That's not how you make change. You make change through personal connections and helping out people on a personal human level. Um, and yeah, it's not about getting, I found $5 on the walk up here. I just, I don't know. I didn't mean to cut you off, but it, 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 it just sounded awesome. It felt awesome, you know, just yeah. to receive $5 from the universe. They say, uh, <laughs> givers gain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. But that's like, that's where what comes around comes around. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, um, it's, it's, it's all like a big, you know, Hey, we're on a revolving ball. Yeah. You know, it's all like a big circle sphere. If that was your $5, let me know. <laughs> yeah. Right. Everybody's going to get on and be like, yes, that was my dollar. <laughs> yes. My $5. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I guess this has been the COS business podcast here with Brandy and Leo Nunez today. And we'll see you guys on the next episode. I think we have on, uh, Ann Frazier with blades and brews. So, Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Thanks. <laughs>